All right, guys, Mike here. So this video, I just wanted to talk to you about pouring concrete floors in freezing cold temperatures. Now, we have to do that a lot here in Maine, usually around the middle of November to March. We have temperatures that are freezing cold. So about four months out of the year, we're pouring in this stuff. And we've been doing it, you know, for 40 years. So we've got pretty good experience about what works, what doesn't work good. Now today on this floor, these people needed this floor done today, even though it's it's like 18 degrees out right now Fahrenheit, but they had to have it done because they had a crew of framers coming in the next day to start framing on this and they didn't want to delay the framers. So unless it was really bad temperature like snowing or freezing rain or something, they had to have the floor done. So that's why we're here today pouring this when it's 18 degrees out. It's about 6.30 in the morning. And the pumper guy here, he, luckily he got here real early for us so we could get it done and get it in. Now the mix we're using, you know, we're using a 4,000 pound mix. Now normally on a floor like this in the summer, we'd use a 3,000 pound mix. But in the winter we use a 4,000 because the extra cement is going to help generate more heat of hydration as this stuff sets up. So that's one thing we do is we bump it up and add more cement in the mix. And then we're always using a... A water reducer so we have a mid-range water reducer in this and then we got about 140 degree hot water in the mix and that comes right from the boiler at the concrete plant and when we mix the hot water with the you know with the dry aggregates the concrete temperatures come out about 75 to 80 degrees if we're lucky but usually it's in the 70s and then depending on how long they have to travel this was a little bit over an hour for the trucks to travel here this morning you know that's going to lower the temperatures a little bit too as far as the mix goes so we ended up with right around 70 degree concrete here and then we always put an accelerator in it too you know we'll, we'll use bag flake is the best that helps dry the concrete up the best it helps it set up faster there's liquid cal you can use and then there's liquid non-calcium accelerators that you can use depending on what your specs say, what you got in the concrete as far as wire, rebar, and all that. But generally, most time, we'll use bag cal, and that works really, really good for us. And then another bonus we have here is this floor has styrofoam under it. So what the styrofoam does for the concrete is it helps hold the heat in the concrete longer. So the concrete doesn't cool off that fast when you get it dumped out, you know, to your four inches, five inches, or six inches thick. We're pouring a four inch floor here today. And then we've got some other areas, as you can see, that are really deep, that are for some type of load bearing beam or something. But the styrofoam is the real key. If we were to pour this same floor today just on a, a dirt sub base with, say, a poly vapor barrier, it wouldn't dry anywhere near as fast for us. We'd be here for hours and hours longer finishing this than we would if we're on styrofoam. So. If you can pour something on styrofoam in the winter, that's going to that's gonna help at your set times a lot. You can see Darren's filling up that really thick spot. But that's about it for the mix design. You know, just 4,000 hot water accelerator with a water reducer. And your, your concrete's going to set up on you pretty good. The other thing we like is we like to have the general contractor cover the floor before we show up. So in the morning when we show up, you know, we, we have to take the blankets off or the tarp off or something. That way, if it does do any type of precipitation the night before we get there, whether it's snow or sleet, freezing rain, that's not on your sub base. You know, when we show up like this to pour and there's, there's ice all over that styrofoam, frozen ice all over the styrofoam, that's just going to, number one, that's not great <laughs> to begin with. And uh, it's just going to kill the temperatures of your concrete. It's going to—it's like—it's like putting ice cubes in the concrete. So, and then that water, that frozen water that melts under the warm concrete, all comes up to the surface, and you got to wait for it to evap for evaporate. You know, on daylight today, where it didn't even get above 32 today, that water doesn't evaporate all that well. So you want a nice dry sub base. So have your have your general contractors cover it up before you show up, or if, if you're responsible for that, then figure out a way to cover it with something before you get there to keep it dry. And you can see the sun's starting to come up now. We're, we're actually on the ocean here. There's a, 
this is an ocean kind of an ocean front home and it has a lot of as you can see a lot of inside corners to this the foundation was kind of all chopped up we were hired here today just to do the pouring and the finishing so we're working for the foundation contractor and the foundation contractor is actually working for the general contractor who is the builder and they're the ones that got the floor prep so they they put the styrofoam down they put the wire down and then they hired the guy to come in the plumber to come in and do the radiant heat tubing and then they put up the thermal break there on the wall that little four inch piece of styrofoam on the wall for us so when we showed up here today we just had to set up our laser shoot our grades as you can see I got some grade pins in there we're using today I also I do have the laser set up too you just can't see it um, and then pour and finish the concrete which is how we do a lot of our jobs you know the general contractor will get the prep work done and then we'll show up and pour and finish and that's what they need us to do the most because that's what we're the best at we we can do the prep work but usually we're pouring every day like this so we got concrete to pour every single day so we don't have a lot of time to, extra time to do the prep work the dangle pump today you know being able to pump this today we couldn't get truck close to this so that that made putting the concrete where we needed it really really easy that sped things up a lot we got another guy helping us Jim there in the blue sweatshirt today he's a he's a buddy of mine he does foundations too he didn't do this one but he's uh he's just coming down he helps us every once in a while when we need him that area right there where we're working towards that thicker area where they don't have any styrofoam that was like 16 inches thick there so and there was a bunch of those in this floor that's why we didn't use the the power screed today because when you're when you're using a power screed and then you're walking backwards pulling the pulling the vibrating screed backwards and then you walk down into a thick spot like that it just you're more apt to get a hump or a dip in the floor so we decided just to hand screed this whole thing today when you're walking up then back down then back up and uh, with vibra screeds you just it just doesn't work as well as what we thought we like hand screeding these ones that have all these big thickened areas in them and that right there that that big chunk right there probably took two or three yards of concrete just to fill that now I don't I'm not sure why they don't do that when they do the footings for the foundation I mean it would it would make things a lot easier if they just poured a footing there when they did the footings for the foundation and then we could come in and just pour a four inch floor over the top of everything it would just be a lot nicer but I don't know why maybe they didn't know exactly where they were going at that time I'm not sure So now we're going to go up in here and we're going to screed this down by hand using the wet pads we made from those grade stakes. And because we've been doing this so long, it's really not that that bad for us. You know, we are hustling a little bit, remember, you know, because we do have a lot of accelerator in this today. So we got about, we only have about 10 minutes of working time to get this down before that stuff really starts stiffening up. When you use... When you use accelerator like flake calcium with water reducer you know the water reducer loosens up the concrete but it only gives you a certain amount of time to work with it like 30 or 40 minutes before it goes back to its regular slump plus then you add then you add calcium to that accelerator to that and that reduces that time even more and then you add the time the truck has to travel from you know when or where it's batched to get to the job and sometimes this stuff starts setting up on you before you even get to screed it like we are. I mean, you can feel it. So it makes it difficult. So we, you really got to hustle. You really got to know what you're doing and and have the job planned out. Because if that stuff starts setting up, it, it gets really difficult to screed. And sometimes we've had it so we just barely could get it screeded, but we couldn't even bow float it. It was so difficult. It was setting up so fast. So then you go to go get your power trial and put the power trial on it and then that fills everything in okay for you. But when that con we call that hot concrete, what do you guys call that? When the concrete's really hot, you know, it couldn't be a struggle getting it down. And we have to deal with that for four months out of the year. So it's just the way it goes around here where we live. And then we get to summer 
and we'll have days in the summer like a lot of you other guys do down south you know it'll be 100 degrees plus we'll have 99 percent humidity you know so we'll be pouring concrete at 4 35 in the morning just to beat the heat and that'll last you know it could last for a couple months our july and august could be like that up here This one's bow floating okay today though. It wasn't it wasn't that crazy as far as being too hot for us. So we seem to have enough working time for the speed we were going to get this down. Luke and Darren are coming down that other side there with the eight foot screed. Sometimes we'll do that with just one guy screeding and then sometimes we'll do it with two. A Little bit less effort goes into it with two guys. You can see Luke just needs one hand to hold that thing. Now another thing, you know, you got to be concerned about when you're pouring when it's when it's in the teens is the pump freezing up. So we've had that happen before where the concrete froze right in the right in the pump truck. And then you know, he's got to he's got to break down, he's got to he's got to move his pump uh, rig around so he can try to loosen up that concrete to get it pumped out. So you don't want to you don't want to have him stop for too long. And yes, the concrete is heated; it's it's kind of warm, but everything else is freezing. I mean, the the steel pipes are freezing cold. The hopper is freezing cold. So it's as soon as that concrete hits that cold steel, it's dropping the temperature of the concrete pretty quickly. And then the air temperature outside doesn't help either. So when we when we stop to screed or or bull float like we are right now you know we we don't want to stop for very long otherwise that concrete could freeze right inside those steel pipes this guy this guy norm he's a good pump operator though he knows what he's doing he'd be he'd be able to handle that pretty easily for us i think if if we did have something go wrong he's been operating a pump for years and years you can see i got my laser set up right there Another thing I'm doing is, I don't know if you can tell, but underneath that, that fluorescent sweatshirt I have on is I got a black sweatshirt, and it's a, it's a battery-operated heated sweatshirt. <laughs> and then I got insulated pants on too today. So that helps keep me warm. I get, you know, having done this for 40 years in freezing cold temperatures for three or four months every single year, I get cold pretty fast now. You'd think I'd get used to it, but I don't. It actually gets worse and worse as I get older. I get cold faster and faster. So that having that battery-operated heated sweatshirt on is a, is a big, big difference. I, this is the first year I've got one of those. I'll have a link for that down in the description if you guys want to check that out. But that thing, I wear that thing every day. It takes a Milwaukee M12 battery, and I've got two or three of those batteries. So they a battery will last, you know, two or three hours probably if I have it on high. I can just switch out the batteries and recharge them and keep it going all day if I need to. Usually just mostly in the morning though is the is the worst part, but that thing heats up nice and hot. I got heated jackets for the guys too. They don't wear them during the pour because they don't want to get them dirty, <laughs> but they'll wear them afterwards and those jackets work really good too. Luke's over there screeding that by hand now, that same eight foot screed you see. Now we're gonna get this ripped down. And we're walking right through that really thick pot. You can see it's almost over Luke's boots right there. That's why with a, with a regular hand screed like this, you can stop and start as much as you need to without really worrying about any higher low spots. And that's the difference between doing it with a hand screed and doing it with a, a vibrating screed. It's, you don't really want to stop and start much with a vibrating screed. You just want to slowly work your way backwards until you're done. But we had to kind of worry about getting it over our boot right there. So we pumped out enough on the in, inside the floor. And then we did a, pumped out a little bit on the outside just in case we needed a few shovelfuls so the pump guy could go up and start washing out. We didn't want to have him wait around any longer than he needed to. He actually had another pump job to, right to go to pretty quick. So we wanted to get that concrete out of his truck and get him washing up, get him out of there.
Now Darren and Luca are going to get that last base created out, and then uh, and then we're going to get this both loaded. Now Darren and Luke hung around today to to power trial this nice and smooth, and it they ended up getting done. They said about three o'clock in the afternoon. So we got done pouring. It was about 6:30 when we started. It took us just a little bit over an hour. So let's, let's say seven between 7:30 and eight, we got done in the morning. And then by three o'clock, this thing was all power troweled out, smooth, burnt out, shined out, whatever you guys call it. So in about seven hours, this thing set up really, really good. And it, the temperature never got above 32 degrees today. So that just goes to tell you, you know what what you can get away with as far as pouring concrete if you got the right sub base and you got the right concrete mix and you can see some of the blankets right there the general contractor came back and he he ended up putting the blankets on this thing to cover it up for the night he probably left them on for a day or two depending on if they were in the way of the framers or not but that's the basic mix that we use when we pour floors in the winter you know three or four months just generally a 4,000 sometimes we'll go down to 3,500 if you know if the temperatures are going to get up in the 30s to close to 40 we could pour a 3,500 mix here today no slag no fly ash ever in the winter months just straight cement slag and fly ash will help slow down the set times on, on days like today so you definitely don't want that in there and I know most companies use that now, but if you ask, if you just ask for a straight cement mix, I think most of them are nice enough to give you that. I suppose they don't have to if they don't want to. But then again, you don't have to use them either. You could use somebody else. But most of them, if you work with them like we do most of the time, every day, then they're going to they're gonna try to bend over backwards to help make you happy. So I'll get that bull floated up and then we'll get it smoothed out and then Darren and Luke are going to hang out. I'm going to go look at some other jobs, get some other stuff ready for, for, fall, for pours coming up. And then these guys are going to hang out here today and get this finished. And that'll be it for pouring concrete in freezing cold weather, guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.